So as we get into the scripture, and I'd like for you to take your Bibles and go to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 31. By the way, hey, uh, Brad, is that Dan Blumquist I see back there? Who, who's back in the room back there? In that room? Oh, okay. Oh, very good. All right. Okay. For some reason, I thought that maybe Dan Blumquist was here. All right. All right. Proverbs 31. And look at one verse, verse 10. Proverbs 31, 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you do a work. I pray that, Lord, we'd be guided by your spirit. Help us to settle, help me to settle now into the guidance of your spirit. We need to hear from you. Lord, I pray for the ladies in this auditorium. Whether or not they are mothers, whatever their place is now, I pray that you would put a hedge of protection around them. I pray that you would give guidance in their spirit. Lord, if they don't know you, may they truly come to know you. And Lord, I pray that we would be enlightened in what we ought to do in the time ahead that you give us. And I think especially, again, of the ladies and the men that are there in their lives to protect them, to encourage them, to help them. I pray in Christ's name, amen. Now we have a gift for the ladies right here. We're going to be handing that out at the end of the service. But first of all, I want to do this. I want to be in the scripture. The title of the message this morning is, Ladies, Let God Define You. Let God Define You. Um, I love getting into some of this stuff. Uh, you know, when, when, when we get to this stage on, on Mother's Day, when we get to this place, you know, you let the kids talk a little bit. This is great. It's like, you know, the teacher that was teaching her kids about magnets and all that stuff and then had a test. And the question was this, my name has six letters and it starts with M. I pick up things. What am I? And she couldn't believe it. Half the test that came back had said mother. <laughs> How many of you had a mother like that? She picked up a lot. Yeah. So kids were asked about mothers. Why did God make mothers? One kid said, because she's the only one that knows where the scotch tape is. And then another one said, well, you know, mostly to clean house. How did God make mothers? Well, one child responded, well, you know, with dirt like he did with the rest of us, you know. No, he used magic plus superpowers and a lot of stirring. What ingredients are mothers made of? Here's a good one. Somebody that just knows it. God made mothers out of clouds and angel hair and everything nice in the world and one dab of mean. <laughs> How many can identify with a mother? Maybe, no, just never mind. Why did God give you your mother and not some other mom? Child responded, well, because <laughs> we're related. That's good. But then there are some that get a little more serious about it. One lady wrote, a mother's lap is the best place from which to launch a life. Another one said, she's someone who will listen to your problems until you are bored with them. Abraham Lincoln said, no one is poor 
who had a godly mother. Charles Wesley, I love this, said, I learned more about God from my mother than from all the theologians in England. You know, praise God. You are blessed if you had a mother that was praying for you and mine prayed for me quite often. There was one pastor, now you got to hear this to the end. There was one pastor that said this. He says, at times we're reminded not to get too sentimental about motherhood because A, for some, motherhood is an accident and not always a welcome one. For some, biological motherhood isn't possible. For some, mothers weren't all that nice. For some, motherhood, under the best of circumstances, is still less than a bed of roses and a primrose path. So, with all those qualifications, why bother with Mother's Day at all? I'll tell you why. Because for all its stumbling blocks, pitfalls, and broken dreams, for all the soiled diapers, soiled wallpaper, and spoiled plans, we're talking about a beautiful ideal, a natural part of God's creative plan to bring love and caring to light. Motherhood is a constant demand for the gift of love and caring. And I say absolutely. Now, I, I want to pause right there, and I want us to stop and just contemplate something. You can turn to it if you want. I have it printed right here. But I wanted to take us back to Genesis chapter 1, creation. And the Bible makes this statement, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now I just read the Bible. Amen? Let's continue reading the Bible, God's Word. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Now, now listen to what is, what, what's talked about here. Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth, upon the earth. Now, what's happening right now is the lies of the wicked one are intensifying all over the world in every aspect of our culture, of the creation itself. Remember, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, from that time on, we have witnessed this. Yea, hath God said, yea, hath God created. Yea, hath God commanded. Yea, hath God stipulated. In other words, to put it in the modern vernacular, did God really mean all that? Maybe there are some other things we need to be looking at. Look at what has happened, and it hasn't just happened recently. But down through the, the decades, and yes, the centuries, all of a sudden, we're no longer made in the image of that God. We're in the image of an ape. I like the little poem that the pastor that I grew up under used to cite every once in a while, Pastor Rasmussen. First I was an amoeba, a beginning to begin. Then I was a tadpole with my tail tucked in. Then I was a monkey in a banana tree. But look at me now, <laughs> I'm a PhD. That's called stupid. But there are people who are smart, but they're not wise. And they will try to tell us, because they have in their hearts a bent to it, and not because of the science, they'll tell us 
we evolved. But now, it's not just that. Male and female are now in question. Folks, I'm I'm sorry. I've got to cite things that are going on now. And it's like, wait a minute, back up. This, This is not so. Here is somebody who was just appointed to the Supreme Court in part because they're a woman. And when asked about it, that woman cannot define woman. What's wrong with us? Sin. Sin. Rebellion against God. It just, it, it, it's so sad. Marriage is now distorted. Creation. We were, that verse talks about, verse 28, about creation. Creation has now been elevated to have dominion over man instead of man having dominion over creation. Now, I'm all for taking care of creation. I don't think we need to trash the planet. But on the other hand, we are to be controlling things in the planet. And it's not a thing of fear where we give in to people who have nefarious ideas, saying, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. I get amazed at the people who are telling us we cannot drill for, uh, drill for oil, get in their private multi-million dollar jets that use, oh, guess what? Jet fuel to fly halfway around the world to lecture us. See, that's, that's the middle of the situation that we're in. But today is Mother's Day. And so my desire is to take God's word to encourage all ladies here, all ladies, because we need to recognize this. Satan is seeking to distort you. That is the whole situation behind, for instance, you know, what is a woman? I I can't believe now that we have, I guess the word is emojis, the little pictures you can use on a phone. They got a picture of a guy being pregnant. Now, I've seen guys that I've wondered And when I have gained weight, it's like, you know, oh boy, okay, here we go. But that's all getting distorted. And there are times we need to settle down and say, you know what? I'm going to take God's word for what God created. I do not want God to be overthrown and have the wicked one defining us. And ladies, I'm talking about you specifically now, because if you let Satan do the defining, you will have babies butchered even after they were born. And by the way, that is the bill, AB 2223 here in California. That is what that bill kicks the door open for. Don't let the people down there lie to you. It's there. It's in black and white. And there's more to come. Children are being taught in the earliest grades that they might be different than what the doctor or what their parents affirmed they were at birth. This is what's going on in government schools. It's no longer reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's so much worse. Trans misinformation is all the rage now. And and, and, you know, look, let, let me stop and say this. Satan knows the buttons to push. And there can be somebody that comes along And they have heard this kind of thing and they have thought, you know, well, I I had feelings like this or I've had feelings here and I've had feelings there. You know what? We've got a sinful nature, right? You might not have ever struggled with something like that. 
But there can be other people that come into our auditorium or listen to messages online, and they have, and they are. People that have struggled with homosexuality, people that have struggled with trans sexuality, all that. We need to lovingly affirm to them, listen, God has it all in his word. First of all, he loves you, and he's the one that made you, and he can tell you who you are. And science can be used to back up what God is telling you. Amen? You think, well, you know, we don't want those kind of people in our church. Yes, we do. We want people that are questioning, you know, what's going on? How, why do I feel the way I feel? But this is the kind of thing that's being pushed, and it's being done under cover of closed doors, again, in government schools. Now, we learned that a long time ago. There were those that were in charge centuries ago, more than a century ago, when it came to our schools and said, you give me the schools, I don't care who writes their laws, I'll have the, I'll, I'll have the country. And they are. That's what's going on right now. The more that all this insanity goes, the more insane the logic becomes. Folks, we live in a day of purposeful confusion. And again, ladies, because it's Mother's Day, I'm speaking right to you. And it gets to the point where sometimes you almost feel overwhelmed. God's wisdom is out there. But if God's wisdom is not embraced, there's tragedy that follows. Like Solomon wrote in Proverbs 8, but he that sinneth against me, speaking God's wisdom personified speaking, he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. That's why these people love the butchering of babies. That's why they'll allow, you know, they push it for people to be on drugs. And we've all seen the pictures. It is so sad. Even in our own county of people that are dying from drugs, but they've got to have that freedom. You know, God gives life. And ladies, you're the one that brings that life into this world. So I want to give you three things real quick. Could I do this? Number one, please take this down. God defines you. Again, Proverbs 31.10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? This is what God says. He says, let me tell you, you see that lady, you see that mother, you see that grandmother or that great-grandmother, you see that one that is seeking to do right according to my word, she is worth more than all the wealth that these so-called rich men have. It's far above rubies. You know, one of the things I like about people living older now is, you know, that generations get to know. But I, I got to ask this, this, this. Watch this. How many of you ladies in here are great-grandmothers? Raise your hand. Look at that. Great grandmothers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's incredible. That is great. You've got an influence that is priceless. A godly woman, a woman that sits in this auditorium this morning and looks at God's word and says, Yes, that woman. Is far, her price is far above rubies. That's the definition of our God. I will stick with him. Charles Spurgeon said this, I cannot tell you how much I owe to the prayers of my good mother. I remember her once praying, oh boy, this is rough. Quote, now Lord, if my children go on in sin, it will not be from ignorance that they perish. And my soul must bear swift witness against them in the day of judgment if they lay not hold on Christ and claim him as their personal savior. Spurgeon heard his mom praying like that. It reminds me of um, 
G. Campbell Morgan, great preacher, his four sons, four of his sons, were, were turned out to be pastors. Somebody came to the house one time, thought, I'm going to have a little bit of fun. One of the sons' name was Howard. He looked at Howard. Now remember, G. Campbell Morgan, famous preacher, and four sons, all preachers. Hey, Howard, who's the best preacher in your family? And without hesitation, Howard Morgan said, Mother. You know, how many of you had moms that were good preachers? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mine was. Listen, Proverbs 19, 14. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers. A prudent wife is from the Lord. Proverbs 12, 4, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Amen. But she maketh ashamed is his rottenness in his bones. Look at the level of godly instruction the Lord places on the mother. Proverbs 1, 8, my son, hear the instruction of thy father. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Whoa. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 23, 22. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee and despise not thy mother when she is old. By the way, I, I want to do something right now. I want to tackle it. We're, we're going to step into some things right now that some people would say, well, you know, don't do this. This is not politically correct. Go to 1 Peter 3. I want you to see something. 1 Peter chapter 3. It's amazing how in, 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 in the realm of men and women, how much both are needed. I said, how much both are needed. Look at verse 1, 1 Peter 3. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Now hear me out. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation, the manner of life of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on apparel, but let it be of the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in, subject, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. I want to tell you something. First of all, you interpret Scripture with Scripture, so don't you dare leave me. But I do dare say this. There are women that are sitting in this auditorium that would say, you know what this nation needs right now? Men who stand for Jesus Christ, who are not ashamed of the gospel, Men, step forward. Take the leadership. Do it. Now, ladies, if we drift from that, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Now, I want you to hang with me on this. I want you to go to the next point. God defines you, but now God defends you Look at verse 7, 1 Peter 3. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving, what's the next word? Honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Many years ago, I don't think, in fact, anybody here would remember this, Many years ago, we had a lady show up here at the church. She had five children with her. 
She escaped another state. She had a very abusive husband. She went to the pastor's wife. By by the way, they lived in a trailer that was like 24 feet long and five children. She went to the pastor's wife and begged for help and told how her husband was abusing her. And the response of of the pastor's wife was this, well, honey, that's just our lot in life. That situation was several states away. But what really needed to happen is there needed to be some men that took that um, that man and as the Bible says, you know, when it comes to uh, influencing people, teach them. Men, you lay a hand on your wife, you ought to be in jail. Sorry, that's it. Well, you know, just smack them around every once in a while. Don't even dare to try it here. Uh, Now, I'm not trying to be theatrical. I'm, I'm really not. But that is wicked. And a Christian man ought to know it. Go to Ephesians 5, would you please? Ephesians 5. Now again, here's one and people start to kind of choke up a little bit and all of a sudden looking up at the ceiling. No, it it need not be. It need not be. I praise God for my wife. You know who takes care of the finances in our house? You know why? She's better at it. That's one of the reasons why I tell her, don't you dare die on me. I wouldn't know what to do with the checkbook. In fact, I I do threaten violence, I have to admit. I I, I tell her, you die on me, I'll smack you. I'll hit you so hard you'll feel it in heaven. But I praise God for my wife. And I tell you what, I, I listen to her wisdom. Smart men do that. I said, smart men do that. There we go. Okay, I just, (laughs) ladies, I'm I'm up to bat. I'm telling you, and I'm swinging. I'm trying to, you know, giving it. Look at look at verse 22 in Ephesians 5. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord, because God is our leader, and men, we ought to know leadership. But now, watch, please. Again, the Bible interprets itself. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. How? Even as Christ also loved the church to the point and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Well, I'm the man of the house. Good then prove yourself a man. Love your wife. Be in subjection to your master in heaven. And he said, love your wife as I love the church. How much does Christ love the church? How many of us are born again? Need we say more? See, that's That's the whole point here. God defends women. I remember we saw that video in the series from Tim Kazee and Frontline Missions 
they were in, I forget what, what uh, country it was, but in that country, because of the Islamic influence, women and daughters especially were treated worse than dirt. But because this couple had gotten saved, their daughter was cherished. And they talked about that in the home. I said, praise God for that. Hannah was not defined properly by man. She's praying for a child. Eli sees her and says, you're drunk. She says, no, I'm not drunk. I am, I'm not a daughter of Belial. I'm praying, I'm, I'm praying for a child. And finally he said, then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked him of him. You know, there might be situations, ladies, where men get it wrong. God will always get it right. God defines you. God defends you. Lastly, and then we're done. God delights in you. Go back to Proverbs 31. This is, this is, this is fascinating. After everything that is written... The Holy Spirit of God leads Solomon to write this. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. It's empty. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. That's what God has declared. That's what God has declared. This is the woman that will receive the glory from me, will be praised by me and by heaven. That woman, the woman that fears the Lord. I want to show you something real quick and then we'll be done. I'd like to add this in if I could, please. Look at verse 1 in Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. I I, I like this. This this is free. This is bonus hour now. Basically what he's saying is, he says, let me tell you what mama taught me. Now nobody, you know, some of us think that, you know, Lemuel was another name for Solomon, but then there are those that say, no, not really. Solomon came across with this, placed it, there in the book of Proverbs and then added on from that point on. Whoever it was, Lemuel says this, hey, let me tell you what mama taught me. Number one, mom, you can preach. Look at verse two, what my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. Mom was trying to tell Lemuel I brought you into this world. I prayed for you. I have prayed for you. And that's why I can talk to you right now. So I can preach. Mom, grandma, great grandma, preach. Next, mom, you can protect. Look at verse three. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Now remember, this is a king she's talking to. She has gone to the White House and is saying, you listen to me right now. But she's not holding back. You know what, Mom? If God has taught you something, boys and girls, no matter what their age, they need to hear it. God is speaking to you through His Word. They need to hear it. Solomon did write in Proverbs 1, My son, hear the instruction of thy father. We shared this. And forsake not the law of thy mother. This is right. Look at verse 4. Mom, (laughs) you can pry. It is not for kings, verse 4, It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Doesn't matter what they say. Mom, you know better. You tell them. You can pry. What are you doing, son? 
What are you doing? Yeah, but I'm the king. Stop. Answer my question. That's pretty good. Look at verse 5. Mom, you can prevent, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. You know, it's told Abraham Lincoln was riding in a carriage uh, with a colonel from Kentucky. Now, Abraham Lincoln loved his mother dearly. Here they are, they're riding along, and the colonel brings out a bottle of whiskey and offers some to the president. And he says, no, thank you. Well, a little while later, that same colonel brought out a couple of cigars and offered one to the president. And he said, no, no, it's okay. He then looked at the colonel. He says, Colonel, let me tell you a story. He said, when I was nine years old, my mother called me to her bedside. And she said, son, the doctor has said, I will not get well. I want you to promise me two things. Number one, that you will never touch alcohol. Number two, that you'll never smoke. You promise me. And he said, yes. He looked at the colonel and he said, now, colonel, would you have me break the promises that I made to my mother? And it's said that that colonel put his hand on Mr. Lincoln's shoulder and said, sir, I wish I had made that promise to my mother a long time ago. I would be a better man for it if I had done what you have done. That's the influence of a mom. Look at verse 6. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Alcohol was seen as a remedy, not a refreshment. Verse 7, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. And then lastly, mom, you can point. You can point. Show the way. Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. By the way, interesting, that word dumb there doesn't mean somebody that just can't talk. It means someone who is so frightened and terrified at the time that they can't talk. They, they can't get themselves to talk. All right? She says, if you come across somebody like that as a king, this is what you do. You step in and you speak for them. Look at verse 9. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. You know what needs to happen right now? People need to hear Lemuel's mama and say, you step in and you speak for those that don't have a voice. You know, kind of like an unborn child. Kind of like somebody who's really going through it. No wonder Solomon went to the next verse and the next point and he said, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Praise God for godly mamas. Praise God for mamas that decide, you know what? From this day forward, my desire is to obey the Lord and be that righteous mama. For those that aren't mamas, your influence, whether you believe it or not, your influence is there. There's not a lady in this auditorium right now that does not influence others. If you didn't, you'd be dead and your memory would influence. Point is this, all of you have influence. All. 
Let God define you and see what the fruit is that comes from that. Could we stand?